riches in our lives. Amen. Amen. And uh, He's providing uh, everything. And uh, there's a thing that uh, we must be thankful for. And as we continue in our study, I hope that every one of us will uh, continue to listen and uh, give heed to the Word of God. And uh, we have tackled about faith, and uh, we will also continue to study about faith this morning. As we continue, Judges chapter 7, shall we all stand please? Just Judges chapter 7, verse number 1 to 15. Let us read, but we are going to study the whole chapter. Judges chapter 7, verse number 1 to 15. Are you there, Paul? Okay, let us read this responsibly. Verse 1, Then Jeroboam, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the hosts of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moreh, in the valley. Verse 2. Po. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel want themselves against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And the return of the people, twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down into the water, and I will try them from the air. And it shall be that the whole might say unto thee, They shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And whosoever I say unto thee, They shall not go with thee. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three uh, three hundred men that lap, lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, hand, and let all the other people go, every man unto his place. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. Verse 11, And thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went he down with Pura his servant, and to the outside of the armed men that were in the host. Verse 13, And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow, and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian, and came unto a tent, and smote it that it fell, and overturned it that the tent lay along. Altogether, Paul. And it came when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped, and he turned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. Let's pray. Our loving Lord, thank you once again for this great opportunity, great day, Lord, that we can gather and study word. I pray, Father, that you will help us. Give us, Lord, that desire and uh, 
in our hearts, Lord God, to listen to your word. And be the one, Lord God, to give us the uh, understanding, the wisdom that we need, Lord, in order for us to grow spiritually. Thank you, Lord God. Please guide me. Holy Spirit, please teach me. Please teach us, Lord. This is all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Paul. So a very familiar verse, a chapter, and this uh, chapter has been, uh, you've heard many preachings about this chapter uh, in your lives, but uh, as we continue to study on this, there are some uh, thoughts and some principles that we can gather here. Now, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, as we go there, please. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. If you have remembered last uh, Sunday, that's the last verse that, I, that we read before we end the message. Amen? You know, Christians are either overcome because of their unbelief or they are overcomers because of their faith. Now, and remember, faith doesn't depend on how we feel. It doesn't de depend on what we see or what may happen. The familiar and exciting here are uh, in the account of uh, Judges chapter 7 and Gideon's wonderful victory over the Midianites is really a story of faith in what we call action. Every day in our lives we're fighting a battle. Every day of our lives we're uh, being challenged by those things around us. And it reveals to us three important principles about faith. And I believe that it's everyone of us believe that God is able. Amen. He can do everything in our lives. The only thing we have to do is to trust and believe Him and allow Him to work in our lives. Now, if we are to be overcomers and not to be overcome, we need to understand and apply all of these things in our lives. Because through the Word of God, we have to understand that our lives is always guided by the Word of God. Our lives must be guided by the Word of God. Now, let me give you the message entitled, God is able. Amen? Amen. God is able. Now, in verse number 1 to 3, it says here, Then Jeroboam, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the hosts of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moray, in the valley. In verse 2, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Now, take a look here. We have to understand that God examines our faith for at least two reasons. First, to show us whether our faith is real or counterfeit. Second, to strengthen our faith for the test He set before us. Amen? Amen? No. We can follow men and women of faith and share their exploits in the Bible, but we can't succeed in our own personal lives by depending on somebody else's faith. Now, in verse, take a look here. Look at the, let us read here the phrase, And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. This is one of the great tests. Point number one, God is able to examine our faith. To examine our faith. This was a great test of Gideon's faith. They started about 32,000 uh, 32, men and uh, take note that still they cannot match the number of the Midianites that were about 135,000. Yet God thought his army was too big. Take note. And he commanded Gideon to invite all of them, uh, those who were afraid, to go home. And what happened here as we continue? 
and only 10,000 people were left from 32,000. Now, in verse 3, Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead, and there return of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. If you can see here, I believe Gideon was very surprised. He was really surprised at the number of men who were afraid to fight. And he hoped that even if I mean he hoped that only few people should have left to face against the numbers of the Midianites that were waiting for battle. But the Bible tells us, tells us that we are told that they assembled in a place where they could see the 135,000. They can overview, they can see those people. And, th and this could be the reason why some of those Israelites left Gideon and returned back to their homes. Now, this is the problem sometimes. If you can see the problems ahead, we might what? Make our own course instead of going to the, cur uh, to the course that God has been prepared to us. There's a problem most of the time. We're scared. We're afraid. We're not thinking that God is able, that God can do these things for us. God is able to examine our faith. Now, in verse 2, what's the reason why God wanted to uh, remove those people who have fear? One, the people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites. Again, lest they vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. That's the reason. This explains why the army of 32,000 was too large. Israel could still what? Take their credit for the victory if they had what? If they remain the number of 32,000. They might say, we won because of our might. We won because of our power. We won because of our strategy. We won because of our intelligence. And God doesn't want that to happen. They could believe they were underdogs who triumphed through their own great bravery or strategy. God wanted the odds so bad that the victory would clearly be His alone. Yes. Because everything that we had, the victory that we can receive, the, vi the victory that we can gain in our lives always comes from the Lord. No. Now, as we continue here, if we really believe the principle in Zechariah 4 6, please. Zechariah 4 6. As we go there, the Bible tells us, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power. But by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. Then the small things does not matter. If we really believe the principle in Psalm 20 verse 7, please. Psalm 20 verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Then the things that are small does not matter. Why? Because God can work out from it. God is able. So in verse 4, as we continue here, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down into the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that whom I say unto thee, these shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, these shall not go with thee, this, uh, the same shall not go. Take note that God already had reduced Gideon's army from 32,000 going down to 10,000. 
And this time God reduced it from 10,000 once again to what? 300. God did this because what? 10,000 were still too many for God's purpose. Amen. Can you see the point here? We really think that being a big in number can be a hindrance to the work of God. Yet it is harder to truly rely on God when we have too many wonderful resources in our hands. And that's the truth sometimes. Especially if God, uh, we're already overwhelmed by those success that we have in our lives and everything, then that's the time that we tend to forget how God really works in our lives. That's the problem. Take note that it certainly can be done. It is hard to be big and to rely only on the Lord. Sometimes when we are, are big, it's, it is possible to do a lot of what they call human resources and give credit to God. Take note. Other people will say, in my church, when I founded a church, when I established the church, can you see those praises that they've been using? Instead of giving credit to God. Why? Because they believe now that because of their might, because of their power, now they became successful. To examine our faith. That's why Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, verse number 7 to 10, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 7 to 10. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Other, others are uh, said that it's about the eyes of uh, Apostle Paul. But again, as we continue, we can see here that it means here simply as the infirmities or the weaknesses of Apostle Paul. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather gl uh, glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen? Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Take note, Apostle Paul okay, is a knowledgeable person. He was a member of the Sanhedrin. He knows the books of the law. He knows uh, really well when it comes to the word of God. But again, take note, God gave these weaknesses into the life of Apostle Paul so that Apostle Paul will only depend on God, not on himself. The same thing as when God will bring these weaknesses in our lives. God provided these weaknesses in order for you to look on Him alone not on yourself. Because God knows our weaknesses. God knows our nature as human beings. To examine our faith. Amen. God is able. Let's continue in verse 4. And bring them down into the water and I will try them for thee there. Now God put Gideon surviving 10,000 men through a second test by asking them all to take what? A drink down at the river. Now I believe nobody knows that they were tested. Nobody knows that Gideon and God and Gideon were examining them. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. So we never know when God is examining us in some ordinary experience of life. And we must be thankful for that. This seems a strange test. And there are different ideas as to why God used to, uh, to separate the soldiers. Perhaps it was because those who cut the water in their hands and, brought it to their, uh, and put it on their mouth were better soldiers. 
Why? Because they're careful that the enemies may at, might attack. Amen? They were, they were very careful. So the same thing in our Christian lives. We must be careful because we know that the enemy might attack us in a different uh, weakness in our lives. If we are careful, we will fall. That's why it is not uh, right that we will only uh, depend on those areas, areas where we are strong. We must defend the whole thing in our lives. And with the use of the word of God, we, by uh, uh, communicating the word of God, by fellowshipping with the word of God, I believe our lives will be guided and be protected. Now, oh. We might say as well that God eliminated the fearful and those who thought first only of convenience. The easy way. Again, I'm very guilty with that. The first time I arrived here in Cambodia, I think I can do everything. Looking back to those days, if, I don't know if Brother John could still remember and Brother Cedric. We were conducting Bible study in here, on that place over there. Because I really thought that I can do everything. I said, Pagdating ko dito sa Cambodia, dapat may matroy na ako. Yes, we were able to <laughs> have a Bible study. Actually, sinusundo ko pa yun. Papunta dito. I don't know, Brother John, you could still remember that, Brother Cedric. Kasi mga isibilibisi mga style natin dati, di ba? Witness na ako. Sabi ko, okay, we will pray. Please follow me in prayer. I said, Father in heaven, sabi nung nilid ko sa prayer, who's father? My father? <laughs> Nor by might. Not by our own wisdom. Akala ko nakadali na ako. Ayun, nagtatawanan sila. Hindi na maintindihan yung ba, ano, ginagawa namin. Ulit, ulit na naman ako, ulit. Di ba, tandaan nyo? If you still remember. Bata pa kasi yun during the time. No. Ah, kasama ko yan. Dati. <laughs> so, those are the things. Well, the problem sometimes is that how many Christians are so fearful of the enemy that they are not, uh, they are of no real use in this warfare? And how many of the remainder are so what? Self-centered rather than God-centered. How many? That they find little place for effective ministry. That's why, to tell you honestly, going to the villages, na grabe ang maglaban dyan, tinatamad ka. But thanks be to God, uh, my wife keeps on encouraging me. And, and, the last time we went there, round up, I go, may atin pa kayo ng Bible study. Negatibo agad ako eh. eh. Nagkasala ako. But praise the Lord, we were, we were able to conduct a Bible study during that time. Nagdala sila ng kandila, ilaw. Ratchin was with me. Habi ko, Ratchin, you interpret. Ang dilim, hindi na kami nakakakitaan. But praise the Lord, if you really give your heart and and trust God in everything, then God will do something on it. Now, take note. To become effective in the ministry, we must what? Give our lives to the Lord. We must be considerate. We must be uh, something like uh, give our dedication in our love for what we are doing for the Lord. Now in verse 7 here. And the Lord said unto Gideon, by, three, by the three hundred men that lapped, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. And let all the other people go, every man, into his place. God really loves Gideon, right? He loved him so much. God's mercy was on Gideon. God here assured Gideon that victory was certain. Victory is sure. Even if he has only 300 men with him. Amen. 
Now, we can see here that at least one army, one uh, Israeli army is to, to, to uh, 400, one is to 400, something like that, against the Midianites. But again, here, Gideon could only trust in God because there, what, there was nothing else to trust but only God. God is able to examine our faith. Point number two. Where is number 9 to 15? And it came to pass, verse 9, the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down to the host, to the host, uh, unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. Verse 10, But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Pura, thy servant, down to the host. Yeah. How grateful we should be that God understands us. And God doesn't condemn us because we have doubts and fears. Amen. God would not go there. Oh, Brother Deo. Gangin, ha? Wala ka pa ring faith. Hindi ganun ang Diyos sa atin. No. God understands us. He keeps giving us wisdom and doesn't scold us when we keep asking. James 1.5, please. James 1.5 If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Remember that our great high priest in heaven sympathizes with our weaknesses. Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an any high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Point number two, God is able to encourage our faith. He is able to encourage our faith. And another thing, it keeps giving us more grace. In James 4, 6, please. James 4, 6. The Bible tells us here, But he giveth more grace, amen? Wherefore he saith, God is the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble, amen? And in Psalm 103 verse 4, 14, I mean, Psalm 103 verse 14, For he knoweth our frame, amen? He remembereth that we are dust. And Psalm 78 verse 39. Psalm 7, 78 39. For he remembered that they were but what flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. But praise God. He is able to encourage our faith. In verse 9 here, we are told here, Arise, get thee down into the host. You know, all the plan God has given to uh, Gideon was already laid. Amen. All Gideon needs to do is to just follow and obey what God is telling him to do. God wanted Gideon to find encouragement in this visit to the enemy's camp. This shows that when God asks us to do hard things for Him, He doesn't fold His arms and sit back and expect us to do it on our own. Amen? He is there to guide us and keep us and encourage us all the way. That is our God. Amen? Are you thankful for that? The Lord told Gideon for the fourth time that he had delivered the Midianite host in his hand. 
Now, let us take a look once again. Thank you, Brother Deo. Now, although the battle was, uh, must be fought, take note. One thing that we can assure, even in our lives today, we can win the battle. Amen. We can win the battle no matter what. Our God is really gracious. The 300 men could attack the enemy host confidently. Knowing that they will be victorious. Kaya ano ba ikakatakot natin para lumaban sa katotohanan? Ano ba ikakatakot natin para hindi natin alamin ang katotohanan na sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos sa ating buhay? Verse 11. And thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then when he went, uh, then went he down with Pura, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. Take note. This is the tender mercy of God. You know? God dealt with the doubts and fears of Gideon, amen? And wanted to assure him. That's why Christians who believe God's promises and see Him do great things are humble to know that the God of the universe cares about them and is on their side every day. God is on your side. They claim no merit in this faith or honor from their victories. All the glory goes to the Lord. Why? Because He did it all. Amen. Now, in verse 13, and when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dream a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the hose of Midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it that the tent lay alone. Now during this time, um, barley was a grain used primarily for the poor people alone. Barley bread. The barley cake image of Gideon and his, his army spoke of their what they call Weakness and humiliation. Why? Because Gideon belongs to a what? To the least. On one of the tribes of Israel. And again here. The vision here meant that the camp of the Midianites would be knocked over by a humble nobody who is Gideon. Amen. Gideon didn't mind being compared to a loaf of, a, of, of bread of, here. But for now, he knew for sure that Israel will what? Defeat the Midianites and deliver the land from bondage. That's why having this, uh, received this encouragement, he could not help out but what? Spread the encouragement to others and this encouragement built their faith. I believe when Gideon heard that, he was really uh, uh, excited. As we continue, here, verse 14, And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the what? host. Verse 15, And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshipped, of course, and returned unto the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. Sometimes we don't, uh, don't uh, didn't, the answer is already there. Sometimes, uh, I mean, God is already working on lives. 
all we have to do is just read the Bible, understand what the God wants us to have in our lives. All we have to do is to follow, but still we are doing our own thing in order for us to uh, thinking that we can become successful by our own might without really trusting the work of God. But again, after hearing that, Gideon was encouraged. I believe those Midianites, after hearing one of the soldiers there telling about the dream, they didn't know about God. Of course, they're heathen people. But they know Gideon, who is the man of God that will what? Defeat them. They were scared. Encouragement was, uh, having this encouragement really uh, boost up his confidence. Hey, a problem kasi parang ano na eh. Sanay na tayo sa mga naririnig. Oh yes, praise the Lord. But how do we apply these things in our lives? Yun ang question. Point number three, our last point. Verse number 16-25 And he divided the 300 men into three companies. No. And he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lambs within the pitchers. No. You really cannot understand the plan of God sometimes, right? It is very unusual. It is something like Kakawin pa talaga to ng Diyos? A very big question mark most of the time, am I right? But that's what it is. Because God can do impossible things that we can, uh, that we can see in our lives. But everything is always possible to God. Imagine you will go to the battle using those pictures, using those lamps, using those trumpets. How can they match against the 135,000? That's why, dito papaso, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now, and he said unto them, look on me and do likewise. Now again, point number three, God is able to honor our faith. In Hebrews 11, 6, please. Very familiar verse and everybody knows this, I believe. Hebrews 11, 6. Again, to honor our faith. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently what? seek Him. Why? Faith means more than simply trusting God. It also means what? Seeking God and wanting to what? Please Him. We don't trust God just to get Him to do things for us. We trust Him because it brings joy to His heart when His children what? Rely on Him or trust in Him and seek Him and please Him. Wow. Well, after all those doubts, remember in chapter 7, when he doubted that he will become the deliverer of Israel? Too many questions. Amen? Amen. But God only answered in a few things. Now, after all those doubts, Gideon now was a new man when he and his servant returned to the Israelite camp. What happened here that his fears and doubts were gone as he mobilized his small army and infused courage into their hearts by what he said and did. In verse 15, as what I've said a while ago, as we go back there, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. Praise the Lord. 
take no I'm not going to go in detail here detail here but again Gideon was the example for them to follow Gideon said look on me amen look on me or watch me and do likewise or follow my lead and it shall be that as I do or oh, it means do exactly what I do in verse 17 Gideon had come a long way since the day God had found him hiding in the wine press. Remember, if you could return back on, uh, in chapter 6. No longer do we hear him asking, what if? Why? Where? No more questions, amen? No more questions. No longer does he seek for a sign. Instead, he confidently gave orders to his men. Knowing that the Lord would give them the victory. In verse 20, And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lumps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow with all. And they cried, The Lord, uh, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Amen. Hindi malaslan na pagod. Hindi na. Kasi nga, pag nasa kalooban ng Diyos, hindi ka pahihirapan ng Diyos. Amen. Hindi eh. Ang dali lang. Pag susundin mo ang kanyang kalooban. Gideon's great victory over the Midianites became a landmark event in the history of Israel. For it reminded the Jews of God's power to deliver them from their enemies. The day of Midian was a great day that Israel would never forget. Psalm 81 verse 11 please. Psalm 83 verse 11. Maraming gising ngayon. Maganda talaga yung camera dyan. <laughs> Amen. Make the nobles like Oreb, like Zeb, yea, all their princes. Tama ba? Uh, Psalm ano po? 83 verse 11? 83 verse 11. Psalm 83. Okay, thank you. Make the nobles like... Yung pa rin. Oreb, like Zeb, yea, all their princes, Aziba and Asalmuna. Isaiah 9, 4. Ano ba? Tama ba yung binigay ko? For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. Amen. The church today can also learn from this event encouraged by it. Take note. God doesn't need a large number to accomplish His purposes. No. Well, one thing I like, praise the Lord for that. You know, every time some, uh, uh, we have a preaching here, I always have the notes. Here. I always have the notes while listening. Kaya pag minsan hindi magbigay sa Bada John ng outline, meron na ako. And praise be to God. Kasi natututo tayo. Eh? Natututo tayo sa salita ng Diyos. Here, as what I've said, God doesn't need a large number, need large numbers to accomplish His purposes. Nor does He need specially gifted leaders. Gideon and his 300 men were of God. Amen? And He enabled them to conquer the enemy and bring peace to the land. That's why when the church starts to depend on great things, big buildings, big crowds, big budgets, then faith becomes misplaced. And God can't give His blessing. That's true. That's really true. Right. Wala naman tayong pwede ipagmayabang eh. Dito sa mundong ibabaw na ito. Ano ngayon kung malaking church mo? Praise the Lord. Pero hindi mo na kanilang pangalandakan pa. We're the first church to have this uh, elevator. How about you? Nakakalungkot lang. 
Amen? Nakakalungkot. So when leaders depend on their education, skill, and experience, rather than in God, rather than, than God, then God abandons them and looks for a Gideon. So the important thing is for us to be available for God. To use uh, just as He sees uh, fit. We may not fully understand His plans, but we can fully trust His promises and it's faith in Him that gives the victory. Praise the Lord for that. God is able to do these things in our lives. And I hope that as we continue and move on, okay, the faith that we have in our lives okay, must be firm. Amen. It must be firm. At any moment, okay, testings may arise. Okay. It could be both sides. It destroy us. It will uh, uh, take us on the ground. But don't forget to stand once again and go on and fight the battle. Everything is here in the Word of God. Remember, God is able to examine our faith. To encourage our faith and to honor our faith. I hope you've been challenged with the message of the Word of God. Before I call our pastor, let us pray. Our loving Father, once again, Lord, thank you for challenging us. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us an example of the life of Gideon. From a simple person to a great leader. And I pray, Father, that it's every one of us who will have as a that uh, faith that is firm as we go on in our journeys of life. Thank you so much for your love and for your grace, Lord. We give you back the honor and the glory. This is all I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.